Hi, I'm Claire and I'm a first year medical student and I went to UC Berkeley for undergrad. And I know how hard it is to go to a big public university and be pre-med. So I have made this YouTube and I'm on Instagram and TikTok just sharing little pre-med tips and tricks. So I'm, I'm really passionate about mentoring and being able to give back to pre-meds in undergrad. So today I'm gonna to be talking about how I got A pluses in both Organic Chemistry 1 and Organic Chemistry 2. It definitely wasn't easy and it was one of the harder classes that I had taken, but I ended up really loving it at the end and I even ended up tutoring people after I took the class. So I am well versed in how to succeed in Organic Chemistry, which is why I'm here to tell you about it today. We're gonna get started on all of my tips and tricks on how to succeed and get an A in organic chemistry. So there are some things you should know before you even start taking the class. So this is things that you should do before you're even enrolled in the class is do your research on which teacher at your school is the teacher that cares more about the students, <laughs> which I know sounds bad, but if you do have a choice between two organic chemistry teachers, you want to make sure, or maybe even three, you want to make sure that you are in the class with the teacher that really does care about their students and also is in the class with the higher curve because you can be the same student with the same brain in organic chemistry one but with one teacher a and teacher b and you can get a completely different grade and i know that sounds crazy but that is the reality of our education system it is not fair <laughs> it is not equal and you want to put yourself in the best position possible to succeed in these classes so if you've heard really big like really bad horror stories about one organic chemistry teacher and you can avoid them then definitely avoid them and get the other teacher and try to gain your schedule so that way you don't end up with them and you end up with the better teacher. And I know it's not always possible, so I'll go through some other tips later on if you do end up just in an organic chemistry class where the teacher is doesn't care about the students and is not putting their full effort into teaching. So don't don't fret if that's not your if that if you're not in that situation. But I will say the leg up that you can give yourself before you even start the class is very crucial if you have that opportunity. So highly, highly recommend doing your research. If you go to Berkeley, then check out Berkeley time, look at the grading distributions and see which teachers you think would be a better fit for you. Talk to upperclassmen, talk to people that have taken the class recently with that teacher and see what their opinions were. Obviously take everything with a grain of salt, get multiple perspectives, but it is very important. I ended up with the teacher that everyone really liked and I, I just happened to end up with them for Organic Chemistry 1. After I really loved Organic Chemistry 1 with them, I actually changed what semester I was taking OChem 2 just so I could take it with them again because I knew that I could succeed in that type of learning environment. So I wanted to keep that consistent for myself. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, my second tip for things to do before class even starts is to make sure that you're not stacking your schedule against yourself. So if you know that you have never taken organic chemistry before, you're kind of scared about it, you feel like you have no background in that sort of thing, but you have to take it, do not take a bunch of really hard other STEM classes alongside it. So I took organic chemistry as pretty much my only hard STEM class that semester and it was really beneficial for me to be able to go to office hours and be able to meet in study groups with people and be more free so I would have more time to practice. And if you can't do that, I would just at least recommend cross-referencing your schedules and seeing if your other classes overlap with the office hours of organic chemistry because office hours are really key, especially at UC Berkeley because it's just kind of like a discussion section for class and it just gives you more one-on-one -on -one time with instructors and being able to ask your questions is really important. So definitely make sure your other classes, even if they are hard STEM classes, do not have class during the times that organic chemistry office hours are. Okay, now here are some tips for after you've actually started taking the class. So. 
I know this is going to sound incredibly simple, but you just want to make sure that you keep up to date on the class. So try not to get behind, watch the lectures if they're online, watch them when they are the day of, or, you know, give yourself a day after, because if you get behind, it's really hard to catch up because especially in organic chemistry, you need as many passes or like times you've seen the material as you can give yourself because it is a very complex topic and it requires seeing it over and over again to be able to understand it. So when it comes to, you know, reviewing before a test, you want to make sure that that's actually review time and not the first time that you're seeing material. Like you don't want to be the week before the test just understanding like what an electrophile is. Like you want to be able to see that multiple times before the test comes. So make sure you stay up to date on material and do that to the best of your ability. I know it gets hard sometimes, but that's my top tip. And then my second tip is go to office hours. I know I've already mentioned this, but office hours, especially at a big public university, are a space where you can ask your questions to an instructor that should be knowledgeable about the topic. I, I remember so many times where I was like in my room, just struggling alone on a top through a topic, trying to figure it out. And then the next day I'd go to office hours and it would take like the graduate student or like the TA like two minutes to explain to me exactly what I was struggling with for hours. So make sure that you take advantage of all the resources that are provided to you. Not all office hours are created equal, obviously. And this goes back to like teacher inequality in terms of who cares about the students and who's good at explaining and teaching in general. So what I would recommend is the first few weeks of class, go to a bunch of different office hours for different TAs, go to your professor's office hours and see which ones you think are, you have the biggest learning connection with, see which ones you think will be able to explain things to you in a way that you understand the best and go to their office hours consistently because they will explain the topics to you in a way that you understand. And that is very, very valuable. And sometimes I would even go to office hours because in, at Berkeley, they would have these big rooms. It was basically just like a study room where they would just throw a graduate student instructor in and be like, okay, answer all these students' questions. And so, you know, there's only really like one or two graduate instructors there. So when they were helping someone else, I would just be working on my homework on the side. You don't have to be there to ask a million questions. Like you can just sit there and do your homework. Like just do your homework in the presence of other people that are also doing the same assignments or in the presence of graduate students. That way they can answer any questions that you have right on the spot, right when you have them, right when you get confused. That is very valuable. Don't be confused and just accept confusion. You need to be able to actually understand the material. Don't just like blindly memorize it because otherwise that's not going to be good for test taking and you're going to, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Understand the material. That is, that is very key. Also, one more quick note about professor office hours. My professor actually made his office hours kind of like a discussion section for the class. So that was super helpful. Like I highly, highly recommend making sure your professor doesn't do that before you completely discount their office hours. Go to their office hours and see if on the whiteboard drawing stuff out and like have planned problems to do during office hours because those can be potentially problems that are going to be on the test or are going to be, you know, really beneficial for you to understand what is on the test. So go to the professor's office hours. If it's a discussion section like sort of thing, then go every week and make it make it like required for yourself to go every week to those. And if your school doesn't have set office hours or, you know, a big space where you can work with other students on problems, then I would highly recommend making your own study group. I know it can be hard at times to organize things like that, but in general, organic chemistry, if you work through the problems with other people, you can really fill in the gaps of your knowledge a lot quicker than if you were doing it on your own. Okay, next tip is if you are not learning well from your professor, and if you do have one of those professors that doesn't really care about students, doesn't care about teaching and they just want to do their research or, you know, they're, we, we've all known the type, um, then I have heard of some third party resources that have been helpful for people. Um, I personally didn't use them, so I just want to put that disclaimer out there, but I would highly recommend based on what I've seen online, the book, the textbook, Organic Chemistry as a Second Language is very helpful for a lot of people and also the YouTube channel, The Organic Chemistry Tutor are the two main like third party resources I've seen a lot of people use and really, really love with their organic chemistry class if they do not like the way that their teacher 
teaches. I will say ultimately the way your teacher teaches is probably how they're going to test. So it's definitely crucial to make sure you understand what kind of problems they're bringing up from time to time. So now I'm going to talk about how to actually study for organic chemistry. And there's one word that I want to get you familiar with. It's practice. Practice is so key when it comes to this class. You need to be able to do practice problems on your own without looking at a solutions manual and be able to work through each problem and understand each step of each problem. And how you get there is just by, first of all, asking your professor or asking your TA if they know where to get practice problems. If your professor has released practice problems or passed midterms, you do those. You do not not do those. You do those. <laughs> those are very important because usually they stick to the same type of question on their actual tests. And so you want to make sure that you know those questions inside and out. And that is something that you you can ask them for if they don't actually provide, say, oh, like, do you have any past midterm questions that you would be willing to post? If they don't, that's totally fine. Um, you can look online for practice questions. Or if you go to Berkeley, there's a website called Tau Beta Pi. I don't know. It's a, technically a fraternity, an engineering fraternity but they post all of the past midterms that they have access to for a bunch of different classes and the answer keys by professor. So I would highly, highly recommend you go through those questions for your professor. Look at the answer key, look at why you got things wrong, look at why you got things right, cross compare. And that is gonna be your best bet in terms of learning through doing. You cannot learn organic chemistry just by reading a textbook. Like you have to be able to do problems on your own. And the way to do that is just by starting to do problems on your own and looking at the answer and figuring out what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. So that is my top tip for actually learning the material is practice. But when you're doing practice questions, I want to remind you that organic chemistry with all of its reactions, each reaction has so many steps to it. It's really complicated at times and it could be easy to just say, Actually, I just want to memorize this. I don't want to understand why, you know, this attacks this or you know, I don't want to understand why these go together or like why the electrons move this way. I just want to memorize it. Do not do that. It you need to know. You if you if you really want to succeed in organic chemistry, you need to know why each step is happening unless someone has explicitly said, "We actually don't know why this happens and it just happens spontaneously" or something like that. You just if if there is something about, you know, electrons moving from one molecule to another, you need to know why they are, why why they're doing that. Why is, is the electronegativity difference? Is there, you know, you need to understand the principles behind why reactions happen in order to do well in this class. And the way you can do that is by looking at these third party websites that I've mentioned or textbooks that I've mentioned, I'm asking questions about why things happen, um, being able to just fundamentally break down concepts and break down big reactions into their smaller steps, that will take you a really lot, it will take you far in this class. So don't just memorize, I'm begging you, unless it's like naming, which you just have to memorize, or like I said, reactions where we kind of don't know what's happening, try your best to fundamentally understand what's going on and not just discount it and say, I don't know what's going on, I'm just gonna memorize it because that will ultimately not lead to success on a test. And a lot of people do think organic chemistry is just memorization when I feel like I did not memorize that much. I felt like I was doing a lot of problem solving on the tests. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like rote memorization. So keep that in mind and you will go far if you understand each step and why it's happening. Okay, that was all of my tips so far on how I got an A plus in both OCHEM 1 and OCHEM 2. I hope that was helpful. I. I know this is a time where people are transitioning into starting classes for the spring semester, so I just wanted to put these out there for people that might be starting organic chemistry in the spring. And I would love to answer any questions that you have in the comments below. And also I am on TikTok and Instagram at it's Claire Jean, so feel free to find me there and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content related to 
pre-med, undergrad tips and tricks because I always want to help people get through the pre-med phase because I just remember how hard it was to be pre-med at UC Berkeley and I want to be able to help make that process a lot easier so you're not struggling through it alone. So yeah, ask me any questions you have below and let me know what other videos you want to see because I'd be more than willing to make them. I hope that helped. Bye!